Hey everyone. So in this stream, I wanted to introduce this React docs, um, this new documentation page, which is currently in beta. And I've been using this at my work to learn more about React and some of the best practices. Um, I come from an Angular uh, background, so React is still new to me. And I'm still learning some of the best practices around it. And I found this uh, React docs, docs beta very useful. Um, so one of the things I've been doing is I've been going to this Learn tab and then just kind of scrolling through and reading stuff. So I thought today we could do it together. So for this stream, I was going to go over the adding, I think, oh, yeah. So adding interactivity. interactivity um, and then the state, a component's memory part. I think that's the one I wanted to read, so we could kind of read together, and then if this doesn't take too long, we could look into rendering in commits, um, like how does React actually render um, the component, and how does it commit to the DOM? All right, let's start. Let's start uh, talking about state. So it says components often need to change what's on the screen as a result of an interaction. Typing into the form should update the input field. Clicking next on an image carousel should change which image is displayed. Clicking buy should put a product in the shopping cart. So these are all kind of typical behaviors you'll see in common apps where you have to respond to some sort of event by the user and do something else, right? So the form should update. Um, like typing into the form should update the field. Clicking next changes the picture then in a slideshow or clicking on buy adds it to the shopping cart. So think Amazon. So components need to remember things. The current input value, the current image, the shopping cart. In React, this kind of component specific memory is called state. So the reason they're talking about component specific memory um, is you know, you could kind of use a global state rather than a component state. Um, there's a popular library called Redux um, that allows you to kind of take the state to a global level. But usually, if you can kind of isolate the state into just one component, it's considered, it's, it's considered better practice just because it makes the components more easily testable and it doesn't pollute the global state. All right, so we'll learn how to add a state variable using this use state hook, what pair of values the u hook returns, how to add more than one state variable, why state is called local. So I'm kind of interested in the last part, but we'll go over all three of these as well, just to kind of brush up on our um, topics. So here they have a component that renders a sculpture image. So this is kind of the sculpture here. And then clicking the next button should show the next sculpture by changing the index to one, then two, and then so on. However, this won't work. You can try it. So I like how this documentation that the React community is trying to put up is kind of taking you step by step rather than giving you the final solution, right? So here they have, so they're saying you can try it, but it won't work. So I guess let's try it and we can see it doesn't work. And if we kind of inspect the code a little bit, you can see that they have this gallery component, which has an index set to zero. And then on handle click, it just increments the index to one. And they're defining a sculpture from the list that they're importing from data.js. So this is essentially like an array of objects. And initially we're at index zero. So we're looking at um, this image. And when you click this button on click, handle click, next, this should update the index. So you would imagine that since an index is updated, um, you would kind of see React re-render this part because index is new, a new value. And then based on that value, um, the sculpture would be updated, which would kind of trigger changes, which would update the DOM. 
So you can see the handle click is trying to update the local variable named index. So it's trying to update kind of index plus plus or index equals index plus one, um, this one, but two things but two things prevent that change from being visible. All right. So this is kind of bleeding into the rendering part. Um, so local variables don't persist between renders. So when React renders this component a second time, it renders it from scratch. It doesn't consider any changes to local variables. So if React is trying to re-render this component, it's essentially running every line again, which is reinitializing the index to be zero. If we could kind of take this index above line three, we could possibly um, trigger a re-render. Um, trigger a re-render which uses the updated index, which is kind of what you know I was talking about earlier, like using Redux, where you can use Redux to take the state out of the scope of the component, which you should usually avoid uh, for testing reasons and just scoping reasons, right? And changes to local variables won't trigger renders. So yeah, essentially right now, this line is not even triggering a re-render. So React doesn't even realize it needs to re-render the component again with the new data. So that's just kind of a design choice that the React um, team used that if you're doing something like this, that does not qualify as a rendering, a re-render. Um, in Angular, this would actually trigger a re-render. So that's interesting that they kind of differentiate between local variables, which are not state. So like state, full state, well, actually like variables that are for state and variables that are not for state. So to update the component, you need to retain the data between renders, trigger React to render the component with new data. So the use state hook will do both of those. It would retain the data between renders because it would create like a special kind of variable, I guess, called a state variable, and then a state setter function to update the variable, which would, as a side effect, trigger the React, trigger React to re-render the component again. So you can import that from there and replace kind of initialization to a special initialization using use state. And here, index becomes a special variable, right? And the syntax that they're using here, um, it's essentially kind of destructuring the return of use state. So use state would return kind of two different things, and this is kind of how you can reference both of them. Um, and then in handle click, you can use the set index to update the index instead of using what we were doing before, which is this. So this is still basics of React, but I'm kind of going over it because I think things are going to get complicated very fast. So we used use state. We got a kind of a read value and then a, like a set value, so like a set function. So if you want to read the index, you use this. If you want to set the index, you use this. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And once they have kind of incorporated the changes, when you click next, it actually goes over each of these images. And the reason for that is this is updating the index, but also re-rendering the re-rendering re the component. And when the component is being re-rendered, it doesn't start off with zero as the initial state. It starts off with kind of the plus one value, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, so we met our first hook here in React use state as well as any other function starting with the use is called a hook. Um, this is actually a convention. So I learned about this when I was creating my own hook to solve um, a problem. And you know React recommends that any hooks that you create should have the use, should have the keyword use as a prefix. So yeah, if you ever see like use state or any other hooks, they would probably start with use. So hooks are special functions that are only available while React is rendering, which we'll get into more detail on the next page. So yeah, it's kind of bleeding into the second, um, the second, the, the next page. They let you hook into different React features. It's pretty cool that they came up with the with the hook name here. 
All right. State is just one of those features, but you will meet the other hooks later. All right. So there's a pitfall with most things in software. There are hooks functions starting with use can only be called at the top level of your components or your own hooks. You can't call hooks inside conditional loops or other nested functions. Huh, interesting. I didn't know that. Hooks are functions, but it's helpful to think of them as unconditional declarations about your component's needs. You use React features at the top of your components, similar to how you import modules at the top of your file. Um, you can call hooks inside conditions. I did not know that. Um, I'm actually curious. I want to look this up. Calling hooks inside, I would say conditions. Let's start off with conditions. So rules of hooks, I've been on this page before, but I didn't read it fully. Uh, oh, right here. So don't call hooks inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. Instead, always use hooks by following this rule, you ensure that hooks are called in the same order each time a component. Ah, I see. That's what allows React to correctly preserve the state of hooks between multiple use state and use effect. Huh, interesting. Should they go into a detailed explanation here? but I'm not sure if I want to go into that right now. So I'll, um, I'll kind of hold off on that and let's go back to our, to our, um, like, let's continue with the documentation, but I'm, I'm very curious here. And I think this will make more sense once we go over the render and commit. So let's come back here and continue reading because in software, you can go down rabbit holes pretty fast. And I just want to avoid that as I'm kind of teaching. Sorry, just replying to some messages. All right. Um, when you call use state, you're telling React that you want this component to remember something. So you're kind of doing this. And Sorry, one second. All right, so in this case, you want React to remember index. The convention is to name this pair like const something set something. You can name it anything you like, but conventions make things easier to understand across projects. I agree with that. I like how React, how React is so unopinionated but I like that they enforce some conventions just so that React's code doesn't just become full on spaghetti, right? So I think this is important and I'm glad they kind of mentioned that. Um, all right, so the only argument to use, to use, the only argument to use state is the initial value of your state variable. In this example, the index initial value is set to zero, which makes sense. Every time a component renders, gives you an array. We kind of looked into all of that already. It's like a state variable and the state setter. Um, okay, now let's look at kind of what's happening. So your react, your component renders the first time because you pass zero to use state as the initial value, it will return zero set index. So react remembers that zero is the latest state value. When we update the state by clicking a button, so when we kind of click this next button, um, what really happens is we call the set index. Index is zero, so it's set index one. This tells React to remember index is one now and triggers another render. So React is kind of remembering what index is. And then in the second render, React still sees use state zero. So they are kind of parsing that line, they're not ignoring it. But because React remembers that you set index to one, it returns one set index instead. 
That's that's interesting. So React, although it takes this as an argument because it's a second render, it because it's a second render, this actually doesn't return zero. It returns one. Huh. Okay. So you can have as many state variables uh, of as many types as you like. Yeah, even though you can have too many state variables, um, I know in my current project we ran into an we ran into an issue where we have one component that just has like ten different states, and that's not something you should do. Um, that just means you're kind of creating one component with too many responsibilities, and that component ended up being like three hundred foreign lines of code. So. Although you can, you shouldn't. If you start seeing too many state variables in a component, I think that's a that's a good kind of code smell where you want to start kind of taking some of the behaviors and responsibilities out to somewhere else and kind of create these very small, easily testable components. All right. So this component has two state variables, a number index, and a Boolean show more that toggles when you click show details. OK, so they've added kind of a show details part. That is just a toggle. And the way they do that is by saying set show more and then kind of negating the value. So if it was true, we would set it false. If it was false, we would set it true. All right. Um, it is a good idea to have multiple state variables if their value is unrelated. Uh, sorry, I just got a message again. Um, OK, sorry, one second. Let me just reply to something. All right. Um, so like index and show more in this example, But if you find you often change two state variables together, it might be better to combine them into a single one. Interesting. For example, if you have a form with many fields, it's more convenient to have a single state variable that holds an object rather than state uh, variable per field. I see. So they're essentially saying that instead of having two different states, let's create an object with a key value pair that has kind of two different keys and then using kind of updating the keys rather than updating different state variables. So that makes sense. Um, so state is isolated and private. This is very important. This is kind of what I was mentioning earlier about Redux. Um, you want to keep your state isolated and private. And I cannot stress this enough. Um, this is something that can make or break projects. And I've seen projects um, being unable to work with when you are not careful of how you're managing state. So state is local to a component instance on the screen. In other words, if you render the same component twice, each copy will have completely isolated states. So that's pretty cool. So you can have an individual component um, and then kind of run it in a for loop where you re-render the same component multiple times, and you would end up with isolated states. Um, sorry, my girlfriend is texting me as I'm kind of going over this. All right, so ch changing one of them will not affect the other. That is awesome. So you can kind of have two different components side by side, and changing one of them does not affect the other. So you could kind of say show details here, but you can see that it doesn't trigger um, a change inside here. And then you can click next to kind of see a different picture um, and hide details. But you can see that this component still maintains its own state. So I'm sure the way they are doing it is by saying, you know, they have a page component and they're kind of rendering two different galleries and each gallery maintains its own state. So that's a, that's that's a neat um, React trick um, to kind of man manage two different components with isolated state. 
All right, this page is long. Um, okay, let's just kind of read through this and recap. So this is what makes state different from regular variables that you might declare at the top of your module. Um, state is not tied to a particular function call or place in the code, but it's local to the specific place on the screen. Okay, um, not sure why they said it like this. I feel like it's so confusing. So maybe this is something that they could improve on. Um, it's not tied to particular function call or place in the code, but it's local. Interesting way to say it. Um, you render two gallery components so their state is stored separately. Also notice how the page component doesn't know anything about the gallery state or even whether it has any. Unlike props, state is fully private to the component declaring it. The parent component can't change it. This lets you add state to any component and remove it without impacting the rest of the components. So this is a great point. Um, app component doesn't even know how gallery component is working internally. That allows us to you know, change the implementation of gallery without affecting other parts of the app, which is our app.js. And that kind of ties in um, you know, to some of the OOP principles, right? Like in object-oriented programming, we have principles like abstractions or encapsulation. These principles are there to help us preventing a change in one object, triggering a change in the entire application. So that's why like state being fully private is awesome because props because props are not and props can actually lead into like several changes into different places. So there's a concept in React called prop drilling um, that is essentially drilling props down too many levels and that could run into issues. But um, but um, but yeah, so with prop drilling, you can run into issues of something called shotgun surgery. So this is a code smell um, where you know a change that you make, so you can kind of see it by the shotgun that a change is actually triggering changes in all of these different files. And if you're using state, you're avoiding all of that. So that's one of the benefits of using state. Um, what if you wanted both galleries to keep their states in sync? Um, interesting way, interesting kind of problem. Uh, you prob I'm, I'm assuming you would probably need to kind of bring up the state to this parent component and then kind of pass it down as props. Um, I think that's one way to do it. The right way, oh, so they have a right way to do it in React is to remove state from child components and add it to their closest shared parent. The next few pages will focus on organizing states of a single component, but we will return to this topic in sharing state between components. Um, and that's probably inside the managing state section. So I don't think we need to recap, but uh, I think I think I think it was pretty obvious what was going on. Um, I think the most important part is state is private to the component, um, and it has its it has very important implications as you're kind of architecting an application. So uh, I'm not really going to try out these challenges. Well, actually, you know what? Let's just try one. Let's try fix stuck form input. So we're looking at this form. And let's see. So when you type into the input fields, nothing appears. So as I'm kind of typing my name here, so I'm, I'm actually typing it. And it's actually not reflecting. It's just stuck here. Um, it's like the input values are stuck with empty strings. So it's just stuck no matter what I type. The value of the first input is set to always match the first name variable. Um, and the value of the second input is set to always match the last name variable. So first name and last name are both, um, Let's see. Okay, so they have the value as a prop being passed that is uh, mentioning our local variables, right? So they're stuck. And the reason for that is, um, yeah, they don't remember between re-renders. So essentially what's happening is this input field, it's trying to change the value 
to you know whatever I'm typing here. But even though it is, it's not triggering a re-render. Even if it were to trigger a re-render, React wouldn't remember that the first name is not empty string. It's actually something else. So can I actually edit here? Oh, that's awesome. OK. So I think what I would first do is first name, set first name equals use state, and then an empty string. And then I would probably do something similar for here. And that would just be kind of last name. And then set last name, right? And when I'm kind of having a change, um, I would use my set first name callback. And then similarly, I would use my set last name callback. So this is essentially making a change on these um, state variables. Oh, it's giving me an error use state is not defined. So I got to import use state. Um, I think I can. I hope this import statement works. All right, there we go. Um, and then handle reset is essentially resetting them. So we'll do set first name to empty, and then we'll say set last name to empty. All right, I think that should be all. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Hey, there we go. Oh, that's just my first name. That's my last name. I can click reset, it resets it. That's awesome. OK, so this was pretty fun. Um, there's there's others, but you know, feel free to try it out at your own time. But I think this covers state. Um, I'm probably going to call it a night um, here and have another session for render and commit tomorrow. I think render and commit is a very technical, heavy topic. Um, because it talks about virtual DOM, root.render, uh, and they even have diagrams. So you know it's complicated when they have diagrams, right? So we can kind of come back to this tomorrow. And I'm, um, I'm very curious about this explanation they have. So we can kind of look into this tomorrow as well, because I think this, this deals with um, rendering as well. All right, let's stop there. Thanks for watching.